Today we're going to talk about a tool that for whatever reason seems to come up pretty often these days. Engineers and adjusters are meeting us on roofs and they're asking us if we've ever heard of the roof snake. Some of them have even tried to say that this eliminates the need to worry about repairability concerns. Today, I'm going to show you how this thing actually works. This is the roof snake. It's made by a company called Pactool. They claim that it will allow you to ignore pliability concerns for replacing a shingle on a roof. The idea is you wouldn't have to lift the shingle as high. Normally, in order to drive a nail on a roof, you'd have to lift the shingle up high enough to be able to strike it with a hammer without hitting the edge of the shingle. By using this tool, you can lift the shingle up, place the nail in, but because of the offset, you only have to lift the shingle the height of the length of the nail that you're installing. Then you can strike the tool. The problem with the tool is the way it's designed. In order to drive the nail perpendicular to the plane, which is required by every shingle manufacturer on the market, you have to place the tool completely flat on the roof. If you lift up one end, it drives the nail at the wrong angle. So if you do place it on the roof while driving the nail, the last few hits cause the energy to impact the shingle. You have an impact mark here and here. And it looks an awful lot like hail damage. In order to simulate the use of this tool, I'm going to install two nails on this shingle, here and here. I've taken before photos of this so that we can see the damage that is caused. I'll publish both before and after photos at the end of the video. In order to install the nails, I have to place the nail in the end of the tool and then put it where I'm going to install it. I start by holding the bottom of the tool so that it is perpendicular to the plane as I'm nailing it in. As it gets closer to the roof side, I have to take the tool off the nail. This thing is swirly as hell. One of the other issues that we come across with this thing is that driving the nail straight is impossible. It's squirrely. It goes all over the place. This is attempt number one. Not exactly the best nailing job in the world. I'm actually somewhat embarrassed by it. Take that nail out and start over. that I have crushed granules. It has that gray coloration. They're all loose in there. It's also the same way up here. Now, most of my impact was in this crevice though. So for this one, all we're gonna have is this damage right here. So it's a trade-off. I did not cause creasing. By using this tool, I didn't have to lift the shingle up very high, but it's squirrely. If I don't strike it just right, I'm gonna end up with a bunch of nail holes in the shingle because it's gonna move one way or the other, and the nail's going to end up getting bent. So I have to baby it in. Once I get to the point where the tool has to rest on the roof, I cause clear impact damage. And it's because of the way that this is designed. Is there a better tool out there? I don't know. This isn't going to do it. Either I'm going to cause creasing or I'm going to cause impact damage. Either way, it's not a pre-loss condition. This should not be used for insurance claims.